Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, and I'm just gonna have some random Total War trailers and then some footage from my own gameplay running in the background. But um, a lot of people have asked about my thoughts on 3K. I will not pretend to be giving my opinions from the perspective of a massive fan of like, I never played Dynasty Warriors growing up. I didn't even know what Three Kingdoms was when it was announced. Like, I was like, oh, China, but like, I'm not familiar with the romance of the Three Kingdoms outside of Dynasty Warriors, which I didn't even know there was a historical thing behind that or a, you know, famous story. And I'm not also going to pretend that I'm like a massive historical fan. When playing the Total War games, the only games that I played a bunch of was Shogun 2. But I didn't play any of the games before Shogun 2. I did not play them and have not played them. I think maybe I played a little Medieval 2 because of a mod, but the game had me. aged so much by that point, I was just kind of like, ah, I don't want to um, get into that. You know, I have been a hardcore, hardcore, hardcore Warhammer Fantasy fan. You know, Warhammer Fantasy is what has always kind of been my main punching force. Um, especially in recent years, for obvious reason. So, with all that in mind, when Total War Three Kingdoms was announced, I was not interested or excited at all. It was not a game that was on my radar. It was not a game that, like, the more they showed about it, kind of almost the less I became interested. Like, it was a little bit interesting because there was a romance mode, but... You know, where you had, like, kind of fancy characters and stuff. But I didn't watch any of the gameplay videos outside of maybe the first one. And I wasn't really impressed with what I saw. Not to mention, you know, there was a lot of controversy about when YouTubers and other content creators first got their hands on the game. And pretty much everybody that I talked to, because I knew a lot of the people that went to the events. And most of them kind of were on the same page of it felt interesting and when they said interesting they meant bad or some of them just outright said that but then the game got delayed which didn't increase my confidence in it at all and then it got delayed again which really didn't increase my confidence in it at all and i was like man is this gonna be like another room two or like is this gonna be like a really bad game but i decided when I saw the Dong Zhuo trailer, I was like, oh, this Kai literally looks like a Chaos Dwarf. Literally. Um, he's just tall. So <laughs> I was like, I'll play that guy. He seems like a fun villain. And he kind of looks like the kind of character I would really enjoy. So I'll give the game a shot. But I have no, no, don't have any expectations for it. Yada, yada, yada. So, however, then probably two weeks before release, I essentially saw some gameplay and I actually became I was like oh okay this is actually starting to look pretty good and you know at least good enough for me to give it a shot and then I have spent about 10 hours playing the game so um, I haven't really said anything outside of my live streams if you've been there which uh, I don't think most people have because they're like, you know, they're like, oh, 3K, he's just trying it out. And that's true. So I got in about 10 hours, and I feel that I've played enough now to give my full thoughts. So now, let's dive into that. I gotta say, I was really heavily expecting to give this game, like, a 6 out of 10 rating. As far as my personal enjoyment. Instead, I have ended up at, like... So I probably a 9 out of 10 maybe a 8.5 out of 10 because there are certain elements like th I really like this game now I will talk about in a little bit how a substantial amount of that might be due specifically to the Dong Zhuo campaign and how that campaign works um, because it's very very unique from a Total War history perspective at least from not like historical but like in a uh, every total war game that i've played so far there's never been a campaign like dong Chuo's. but i'll come back to that in a minute 
As far as the actual game is concerned, I have played multiple factions. Uh, I played a fair amount of the Yellow Turbans, probably like an hour. And uh, I messed around with a couple of other factions for a little bit. But Dong Zhuo is where I've spent most of my time, especially on the live streams and everything. And holy shit, I've been having a really good time. The game is absolutely gorgeous. The... All the parts of the campaign map in particular are just fascinating. When it comes down to, I'm just going to skip to a random time, so there's stuff going on. But, I mean, the campaign map is gorgeous. The amount of options you have when being able to build your settlement is genuinely thought-provoking. And the fact that not only do you have way more building options in a province, or a commandery as they're called now... Um, not only do you have way more building options and you have slots, but then all of the building slots, many of them, once they get high enough tier, they split into like multiple options. And there's a lot of really dynamic ways you can build up your empire from a pure settlement standpoint. Then you have to deal with your court where you have to deal with all of the, you have to deal with a massive amount of characters who all have a really interesting impact on your campaign and if they have relationships or you have to deal with if they like each other if they hate each other what they want how much money they want do you promote them to make sure they stay loyal do you assign them to certain roles uh, and if you do assign them to certain roles you have to keep in mind that the more important you make them the more you're kind of committing yourself to taking care of them and trying to make sure they don't backstab you and all this stuff the missions are, tend to be uh, a little bit better at staying with you throughout the campaign like in total war warhammer you tend to get a bunch of missions like in the first 15 to 20 turns that are like hey do this really obvious thing like beat an enemy army take a settlement uh get a trade agreement with this one random faction and you know get like get going and then they just sort of stop and then from there if you still get missions they tend to be really random Whereas in this one, you literally have the ability with every faction to go to, like, the commanding people in your faction and say, hey, what needs to be done? And all of them will give you a mission that's curtailed to the kind of character they are, this thing, the Invoke the Council. It's, like, every character gives you a different thing based on, like, their personality and what role they have um, in your faction. And that stays with you throughout the entire campaign. So there are constantly things you're working towards. And not to mention the fact that you can kind of move characters around and do source, all sorts of crazy things with them. You can have generals becoming advisors or administrators and watching over a specific commandery. Or maybe they're watching over your entire faction. Or maybe you promote them to being your heir. Or perhaps you prefer them on the battlefield. You know, all that stuff is really, really interesting and fascinating. Um, those parts of this and uh, the diplomacy system as well are fucking fantastic. Like, holy crap, they are so much more improved over every other Total War game I've ever played. Um, like, I, I genuinely super, super, super enjoy the court system. The all, like, dealing with the fact that your characters want things and have desires and you have to, like, you know, stay on them. To make sure they behave and the fact that even the characters who because one of the problems i think warhammer has is that the only characters you really get to care about traditionally are just like fighting characters like, even if you're playing the wood elves in the empire who have uh and the vampire coast who have a system of like hey you know these people can be kind of on a court for you you still have to like level them up a bunch typically for them to get any of the good jobs and for the wood elves in the empire those jobs suck for the most part like they're worth getting but they're not dynamic they're pretty un not interesting and some of them are just outright bad like the vampire coast has a decent system but the vampire coast also has a ton of them and you have to level everybody up a ton so like i have never played a campaign with the vampire coast where I have filled out my entire court because there's like eight slots and you have to get multiple generals to like level 10 or 20 and it's like ah it's so expensive and the game punishes you so harshly 
for having multiple generals and it just sucks. Um, this game has a way more interesting system where even if characters aren't active generals, you still have a strong incentive to interact with them and all this other crazy stuff that I would love to see implemented over into Warhammer. You know, it'd be so nice if I actually had to deal with a government in any of the Warhammer games for the factions that would make sense for. You know, for the Vampire Coast, it makes sense that you have a bunch of bloodthirsty pirates and the more scary and powerful they are, you know, the higher up they get on the food chain, you have to deal with them and stuff. But like one of the things I would love to see is even if you aren't actively using a general, that certain factions maybe once somebody has been become a part of your faction, you still have to deal with them. You know, make sure they behave. You know, for and when I say that, I think like for the Empire skaven uh the vampire coast it'd be kind of cool that if like it encourages you to hire people on even if you're not actively using them as a general just to okay i'm getting too much into what i want to take from warhammer into this game and not focusing enough on the review part anyway so long story short the game's fantastic um i would say if you're a fan of total war gameplay this game is a must have a must try i'll, I'll call it a must try um it, you, you might play it and not really dig it in the end because of the setting and the fact that it's historical, which I can I can totally understand. Like, I, I don't see myself playing this game more than Warhammer at all. Um, but there are parts of it I really, really like. There are problems with the game here and there. Um, I haven't experienced any bugs in 10 hours, which is really impressive. Uh, I experienced a few, like, minor issues, but all of those issues were solved um, by me simply uh, by me simply uh, updating my driver. And that instantly fixed all those issues. Um, I also... Uh, the, only, the only things I can think of is I've had one battle in the entire, entire thing. I had one battle where a bunch of units charged into a fight, and... It got kind of sluggish for a bit, like it got really laggy, but it literally only happened once, and I've had bigger battles than that with no lag, so I'm not sure if it was because of the map or something like that, but it was like a, it was on my second stream. If you go watch, I even like make a comment about it, but it was a very isolated incident. Um, the only other problems I've noticed with the game is like here on a siege map, there are towers, and the towers are like fucking ridiculously strong. Like, the towers are so strong. Um, they're, like, freakishly accurate. And they can snipe people out, and they can kill characters so fast. And it's probably due to how accurate they are. Um, but on the flip side of that, I although in romance mode, I really like the generals. Because they're really powerful and really fun. The thing I don't like about them is that they they're super slippery to a fair extent, and killing them with units is very, 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 very difficult. Like, even if you have a high-tier unit fighting against a mid-tier character, it can be difficult. I will say, though, um, I do like all the characters a lot. Um, they're really, really fun to play with. Um, the AI for pursuing fleeing units, especially pursuing fleeing units after they've shattered and they're not willing to fight back they're just running for their lives is so much better in this game than it is in warhammer In warhammer the ai like whenever you pursue a fleeing unit you tend to just push people and this game you just fucking run them over and they just die like your characters don't stop to do these stupid attack animations and like spin like or characters or units don't like spin forever trying to swing and then, like, they just sit there and stop pursuing. This game has really figured it out where your guys tend to, like, keep pursuing hyper-aggressively. Which is just awesome. Um, plus, they're, like, constantly killing people as they're pursuing. And it almost seems like if a unit is is shattered and it's running, enemy units that are pursuing them tend to move a little faster than them. Um, just so they can catch them and cut them down. Which makes sense and is awesome. Um, other things that I've noticed that I consider massive improvements from a, just a global Total War perspective. Uh, obviously, the campaign map is gorgeous. There is a fair amount of factions in the game, and the intern time is lightning fast. Um, I know a lot of people like the tech tree. Uh, personally, I don't really care for it. Like, it's pretty, and it's, it's cool that as you unlock techs, like, the tech tree changes in appearance. 
but to me that's just like icing on a cake but the cake is the exact same like it's the same quality it's the same flavor there's nothing new there's nothing special about the new tech tree it just looks pretty which i don't really care about um like it, it's nice don't get me wrong but they didn't like do anything crazy with the reform um diplomacy diplomacy system is probably my second favorite thing about this game um the diplomacy system is fucking fantastic the fact that it, it can be a because of the way the map works i'll say um it can be a little stupid like i i don't like one thing i really like about warhammer is that when i click on a faction in the diplomacy menu it'll like take me to where that person is zoom like it'll zoom in on that person say this is where this person is um so i can like pay attention to it and this game it this game for whatever reason the map although it's very very pretty when you're zoomed all the way out and you're trying to figure out where all the factions are it's fucking confusing um they did in my opinion that that's like one of the, my biggest complaints with the game is that the overall map like when you zoom all the way out is one of the most useless fucking maps i've ever seen in a total war game i can't tell which faction is which i can't tell like so much like there's so much information that is not apparent when you're zoomed all the way out and it's it's goofy looking i really don't like it um especially because for whatever reason ca seems to be allergic to using more than two colors <laughs> that's an exaggeration but they they use so few different shades of colors when showing off like all the different factions on the map and they repeat colors which makes no fucking sense on this earth I'm playing a video game that's in full color and like has all these brilliant gorgeous units and banners and all this other crazy bullshit and yet it's not like <laughs> it's not technologically possible for them to give each faction in the game a unique color or a unique shade so I can obviously tell the difference between them like ah oh god it's so lazy but whatever that's beyond the point any event overall though really 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 like the game um i don't i'm gonna try and make sure this stays under 20 minutes just to make sure it's relatively bite-sized for my channel uh the way you recruit units is super fucking cool i love that when you recruit new units on the campaign map they just they immediately join up and then you just have to heal them up to full sometimes it kind of sucks but i i if it, it feels more natural and it feels like it makes more sense like, it feels like it makes more sense for your character to ride into a city and be like, we need more troops, get these guys. And you get, like, they start, like, you get a few of them, but then they start slowly, like, rallying together and gathering as the call goes out. Um, I actually really like it. I will say a few things I don't like about how they've changed the game um, are that uh, um, the... Um, way or when you're in enemy territory there is no way for you to heal your troops or your characters um if you're in enemy territory like you start you have military supplies which basically allow you to sustain yourself and not take damage while you're in enemy territory but even if you use an encampment stance you don't get shit the only way to like heal your your heroes most importantly but even your units is either by sacking a settlement or by defeating an enemy army and getting like replenishment but overall super duper liked the game the trade system like all this jazz here is so fucking nice and the make this work button that should be fucking in every game from now if total war ever releases another or creative assembly ever releases another video game with diplomacy and they don't have the make this work button they should be fucking like shamed into oblivion this is such a quality of life button and it hurts my soul that it's not in warhammer because it is so agonizing when you're like i just want this thing from this faction like i want peace or i want a trade agreement what the fuck do i have to do to get it from you and you have to sit there guessing for like 30 fucking minutes and oh it gets me so mad just thinking about it the, this button needs to be in every single game forever i don't care what they have to do i don't care how like i don't care if that adds another year onto total war warhammer 3 this should never ever not be in a total war game again um the fact that you can actually trade using interesting things uh, like in total war the only thing you have to offer is money and it sucks 
or uh, Warhammer, sorry. And this Total War, you can offer money, you can offer money per turn, you can offer food, you can offer ancillaries, which is like equipment, like weapons or followers. You can offer territory. Like, that's so cool. Um, please, God, give us that in Warhammer. Okay, it's at 20 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap this up. In any event, I really, really like this game, and it did some really fucking cool things. It did some brilliant ideas, and Dong Zhuo is the best villain character that has ever been in a Total War game. Um, it is it is garbage that the Greenskins, Vampire Counts, Warriors of Chaos, Beastmen, Skaven, like all of the bad guys in Warhammer are garbage compared to Dong Zhuo because he makes you feel like a villain. The fact that you can murder your own characters for buffs, you can intimidate and brutalize other factions into doing what you want by just flexing your muscles at them and scaring them. Like, Dong Zhuo is the perfect template for how to make a villainous character in a strategy game. He is amazing. Super fun to play, all that jazz. And the other thing, okay, this is not going to be under 20 minutes, I'm sorry, but we're just going to keep going. The, the other thing I got to talk about is that the thing that's completely unique about Dong Zhuo, for, to my knowledge, in this game that makes him so badass compared to everything in Warhammer at least, is that he is the first character I have ever played in a Total War game where you don't start off as a piece of shit. And I say that with all love. Like, I, I love playing as Karl Franz... And the Empire's fractured and you have to put everything together. But that is every single campaign in the game. Even in Shogun 2, every single faction, you start off as pretty much garbage. And you have to build your way up. This is the first campaign I've ever played where you just start off as a badass. Like, you just come in with a massive economy, tons of money per turn... Two armies that are fairly powerful, one of the best fighters in the game, a badass general. You start like you start off as a just a king and you feel so strong. And it's designed to be difficult, and sure, it you can think of it as difficult because everybody hates you and everybody's trying to kill you. But like this has been one of the coolest Total War experiences I've ever had. Is where you're it, it, like, I don't have to spend the first 20 turns building up my empire so I can be strong. No, I start off strong as fuck, and the whole point of the campaign is to retain my strength. That is awesome. I would kill to have this be some kind of campaign in Total War. Like, honestly, I feel like this is what the Warriors of Chaos should be. Um, like, it, it feels like if you're gonna play the Warriors of Chaos, it should start off as, like, you're a big badass and you have to keep steamrolling to keep it up. Because, like, if you don't, you lose momentum. Well, maybe not, maybe not Warriors of Chaos. Maybe that could be, like, the Ochre Kingdoms. I don't know. But in any event, um, super fucking love this game. They took a lot of really interesting risks, and there are things about it that I don't care for particularly. Um, like, some parts of the campaign I think tend to be a little too fancy and not enough, like, just, like, obvious. Um... And it's, uh, but the, the guide system, like the information tab is really, really good in this game. This little eye up here. Like I, I love that when I click on the eye tab, it doesn't take me to some stupid ass website. It just opens up a system in the game that lets me mouse over things. And it tells me all the information I need to know. That is the way an information tab should work. Traditionally in Total War games, whenever you need to want, whenever you want to know more information about something and you click like a information tab, it takes you to like a, a website through Steam and it sucks. It sucks. I'm sorry, but it sucks. Um, this game, the, I, the information tab is fucking fantastic. Like if you play this game, you have no excuse not to understand how something works once you realize that button's up there. Until you realize that button's there, sure, fine. But, uh, yeah. The spy system is also super fucking cool. But that's one of those things that I also feel like I, I want to talk about. Um, you know, like a comparison of what I want from this game to go into Warhammer. Which I'll make a totally separate video for that. In any event, long story short, absolute pros of the game. Diplomacy system, court system, family tree's fun. Uh, character building and relationships is super interesting and fun. Um... 
diplomacy is amazing. The spy system is very clever um, and interesting. The campaign map is beautiful. The building browser system is great in this game. I love building uh, commanderies. Love building commanderies. Empire building in this game feels great. Uh, um, battles um, are fun, but I there's nothing super crazy about them. Um, I, I would say battles for me are neutral. Like... The characters feel super duper fun, and some of their special abilities are goofily overpowered. But, like compared to Warhammer, it's eh, it's all right. Um, it, it for a historical game, the battles are very good. But um, like siege battles, the towers are overpowered. Uh, also, characters can be super slippery, and if you have a character that's moderately good at dueling, the AI will pretty much just always refuse, which feels like they kind of overbalanced it. From when the YouTubers played the game. And like the AI would always accept a challenge. And just get killed. Uh, the AI is much. The AI I will say on the campaign map is very good. And the AI in battles is fairly good. Um, it feels like it's improved over Warhammer. Which is awesome. I don't think the Warhammer AI is bad. By any means. Um, but the AI in this is better. Uh, which is great. You know who doesn't love improvement. Um, other than that. Uh, so ov overall, the reasons I think you should buy this game, or even pre-order it, are, or at least buy it in the first week, once you've watched somebody play it, are all the campaigns are radically different. Dong Zhuo alone is a brand new type of campaign that is super duper fun, but even like He Ye, who is the, or He Yi, I don't know how, know how you spell it, or pronounce it, but that's the yellow turban guy I played, that dude is fucking hilarious he is literally just pure casualty replenishment and healing rolled into like that's just what he does like he sucks at everything else but like when it comes to replenishment he's just a god so all the characters have very very interesting dynamic campaigns um all of the oh another thing is that all of the uh b -b 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 the dilemmas so like stuff where you're like oh hey what do you want to do with this character in this event? Those are super duper fun. You get them fairly frequently and they're fascinating most of the time. Um, spy system, totally unique, super fun. And I think it's worth playing because if they don't use it in future games, they are idiots. Um, I think I already said diplomacy, but I'm going to say it again. Diplomacy is so good in this game. This court system, fucking fantastic. The camp, everything about everything you can do from the campaign map pretty much a plus a plus 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 battles i give them like a b um eh, b b plus they didn't blow my mind but they're good um so yeah that's i think gonna wrap up all my opinions um i think this game is a must-have even if you're super into warhammer i would recommend at least trying it and if you don't like it then just refund it uh on steam but um uh, I, I, I think it's a game worth playing and it's really, really enjoyable and it's very different. And that's the important thing. It's unique. It's fun. It's different. I had a, I'm having a blast with it. And, um, uh, now for the end of the video, I will go ahead and give myself a shameless shout out real quick. If you want, you can, if you want to support me and the channel, I'll have a fanatical link in the description and the top comment, pinned comment down below. Uh, if you'd like, you can go order Three Kingdoms through my fanatical link and you'll save, I think it's 18%. It's pretty significant. Um, it's a pretty heavy percent savings, which is great because if you try, if you get it just through Steam, there's no discount, even if you pre order. You don't get, any, like, you get the yellow turbans, but you get nothing else. Um, if you go through fanatical, not only do I, you save some money and I make some money, you'll get a, a significant percent off and you still get the yellow turbans for free. So in any event, uh, which the yellow turbans are pretty hilarious. Uh, their campaigns are very, very difficult because you're basically just a bunch of pissed off peasants. Like you're Bretonia without the knights. <laughs> um, but in any event, uh, yeah, super fun game, hundred percent, like full round of applause to CA. Um, I know it frustrated a lot of people. But I think the delays for this game were 100% worth it. Um, because it, I'm going to be frank, it looked like garbage. 
um, six months ago. It looked like absolute garbage from everybody I talked to and everything. I wasn't even gonna I wasn't even gonna ask them for a key to stream it because I was like, yikes. Like I just didn't want to waste my time on it. Especially because, you know, back then we were so we were getting amped up for like profit and the warlock stuff. But um uh, as far as not like not like knowing that it was coming out, but like knowing that it was in the near future. But um uh yeah, they they really killed it. Super great game. It, it deserves to be extremely successful because it's very fun and I'm sure they killed themselves trying to fix it um, to get it ready for release and they did it. So congrats to them on that. Um, and I will make another video very, very soon talking about all the features I hope they recycle from this game into uh, Total War Warhammer 3. So in any event... Thank you again so much for watching. Uh, catch you guys later. Be sure to check out that fanatical link if I and let me know down in the comments below if um, you enjoyed this and if this changed your mind or not. Like if you're gonna get the game and you're like, so text the reason why. I would love to know that. That would be fascinating to me. But in any event, uh, uh, thank you all for watching. Catch you next time, guys.